Hello, my name is Kavita Laghate. I have done my MSc and PhD in statistics. I am teaching for last 25 years in management institute. Currently, I am working at Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies, University of Mumbai and I teach statistics, operation research, research methodology, quantitative models and project management in uh, management courses. Today, we are going to talk about the data analysis part which is multiple discriminant analysis. Opportunities for data analysis are plenty and it becomes the integral part of quality research. Without proper data analysis, quality research may not be possible. In the previous lectures, we have seen the data analysis that covers descriptive statistics for single variable. For two variables, we may attempt class tabulation. One of the way we may be interested is association of variables. The association of variable will be the extent of relationship of two variables. If we have two variables, then the simple correlation and simple regression analysis can be one part. Carl Pearson's the two correlation two variables, one variable is can dependent be used variable for another variable is finding out the degree variable. of association and the relationship may be a linear relationship of the variables. Carl Pearson's correlation coefficient measures extent of correlation between the two variables. A thumb rule says that the coefficient must be at least 0 0.7, then only it becomes the significant relationship between the variables. If it is less than 0 0.7, then it may not be significant. So, we can proceed ahead to create the function of a dependent variable that will define the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. The regression equation can be used to predict the values of dependent variable if the values of independent variables is known. You must have seen in the regression analysis that when the dependent independent variable and dependent variables are quantitative in nature, the variables are generally ratio variables. In case of multiple regression analysis, we have one dependent variable and several independent variables. Let y be the dependent variable and let x1, x2, x3, xn be n independent variables. In case of multiple regression analysis, variables are quantitative and also of ratio type. But if the dependent variable is not quantitative, then regression analysis cannot be used. It will not be appropriate technique to be used. In such cases, we will make use of discriminant analysis. Now, what is discriminant analysis? So, discriminant analysis is similar to regression analysis except that the dependent variable is quantitative in nature. It can be successful or unsuccessful possessing or not possessing some particular characteristic or classification as class A, class B, class C. This for example, using internet banking or not using internet banking can be a qualitative variable. Generally, the division of population is in two categories. It may be the case that we need to classify it in more than two categories. In other words, discriminant analysis is a classification problem, where two or more groups or clusters of population are known as a priori. That means, before actually taking the data, we are aware of the classification. And further, the some, some observations are classified into one of the known population based on the measured characteristics. That means, descriptive uh, discriminant analysis is a technique that is used to analyze the research data when the criterion or dependent variable is categorical the predictor or the independent variable is a ratio variable. In terms of categorical variable means that the dependent variable is divided into number of sets that are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. That means, every observation will belong to any one category. For example, three brands of computer, computer A, computer of brand B and computer of brand C can be categorical dependent variable. Now, we develop a function similar to regression function that will predict the categorization of the observation based on the independent variable. Let us understand. Let y be the categorical dependent variable. This is also called as criterion variable. Y depends on the set of independent variables and they are quantitative in nature. So, a y is a categorical variable 
which is a function of x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, xn and all xi's are independent quantitative variable. Let us see some examples. Let us see the first illustration. If we want to predict the use of net banking customers based on the years of education and age of a person that use of internet banking is qualitative whether the person is using it or not using it. So, it can have two values yes or y and age and years of education are both quantitative variables. Use of net banking facility yes or no is function of age and years of education. Use of net banking can be defined as uh, a plus b 1 of age plus b 2 of years of education. That means, in this case b 1 and b 2 are constants. Let us see illustration 2. Success of the salesperson can be defined as success or failure which depends upon the years of experience and the amount of training. So, years of experience and the amount of training are quantitative while success can be qualitative whether it is successful or not successful. So, the function will be defined as a plus b 1 years of experience plus b 2 amount of training. Illustration 3 individual loan defaulter can be defaulter or non default that means it is yes or no a categorical variable which depends upon the age, income and number of dependent individuals. So, the loan defaulter is a function of age, income and number of defaulters which is equal to a plus b 1 of age plus b 2 of income and plus b 3 of number of independent. That means, discriminant analysis determines a linear combination of independent variables that will determine the group in the dependent variable. So, the purpose of discriminant analysis is clear. We may proceed to see why it is multiple discriminant analysis. So, far we have spoken about the dependent variable which is a categorical variable or a qualitative variable and independent variables are quantitative. If we have more than two variables then we will create this as a multiple discriminant analysis. When we want to create a distinction in the dependent variables in more than two groups then it will be called as the multiple discriminant analysis which is in acronym MDA. Let us understand it in more details. The objective of discriminant analysis is to develop discriminant function that are nothing but the linear combination of independent variables that will discriminate between the categories of the dependent variable in a perfect manner. It enables the researcher to examine whether significant differences exist among the groups in that in terms of the predictor variable. It, is, it also evaluates the accuracy of classification. Discriminant analysis described by number of categories that is possessed by the dependent variable. If the dependent variable has two categories then it, it is used in two groups discriminant analysis. If the dependent variable has three or more than three categories then the type used is multiple discriminant analysis. The major distinction to the type of discriminant analysis is that for two groups it is possible to derive only one discriminant function. On the other hand in case of multiple discriminant analysis more than one discriminant function can be computed. Discriminant analysis is similar to regression analysis except that the dependent variable is qualitative in nature. Classes are known a priori, a priori means before actually looking at the data we know the classes. Independent variables are plenty. Assumption is let variable x1, x2, x3 and so on up to xn that means n independent variable they are independent of each other. The groups of dependent variables are mutually exclusive that means if it is belonging to one category it will not belong to any other category and the group sizes are not grossly different that means you cannot have one set which is of large numbers and another set which is very small numbers. The number of independent variables is not more than two or less than the sample size. Suppose there are k independent variables and the sample size is n then k should be less than or equal to n minus 2. The variance covariance structure of the independent variables are similar within each group of dependent variables. Errors or the residuals are randomly distributed this uh, assumption is required because if there is error then the classification may not be accurate. 
For the purpose of significance testing, the independent variables follow a multivariate normal distribution. There are several purposes of multiple discriminant analysis. First is to investigate differences among the groups, to determine the most parsimonious way to distinguish among the groups, to discard variables which are little related to group distinction, to classify cases into groups, to test theory by observing whether the cases are classified as predicted. Now, we will go through the some of the terms and the concepts that we are going to use in discriminant analysis. If you are using a software to attempt multiple discriminant analysis, these terms will be help you to understand what is the output. So, discriminant function is the first term that we will be making use of. Discriminant function is a linear combination of independent variables. As told to you before, the number of functions computed is one less than the number of groups in the dependent variable. That is, for two groups there will be one function, for three groups there will be two functions and so on. There are two discriminant functions. The first function maximizes the difference between the groups in the dependent variable and the second function is orthogonal to the first uncorrelated with it and maximizes the difference between the groups in the dependent variable controlling the first fu function. Though mathematically different, each discriminant function is a dimension which differentiates a case into groups in the dependent variable based on its value on the independent variable. In discriminant analysis, the first function will be the most powerful in differentiating the dimensions and the subsequent function may or may not represent the additional significant distinction or differentiation. Discriminant coefficient is another concept which will again be very important. Let b1, b2, b3 be the discriminant function which are coefficients of the independent variables in the function. They are called as discriminant coefficients. Like correlation coefficient, discriminant function will have this coefficient which are partial coefficient that reflect the unique contribution each independent variable is making to the classification of the group in the dependent variable. The more the value of the discriminant score, it will be more dependent on that particular independent variable. A discriminant score that belongs to the latent variable can be obtained for each case by applying the coefficients to the value in the respective independent variable. Standardized discriminant coefficients like beta weights in the regression are used to assess the relative classifying importance of the independent variable. Structure coefficients are the correlations between given independent variable and the discriminant score. The higher the value, higher is the association between the independent variable and the discriminant function. Looking at all the structure coefficients for function allows the researcher to assign a label to the dimension it measures. Group centroid is the next concept. Group centroid are the mean discriminant scores of each group in the dependent variable for each of the discriminant functions. For two groups in the dependent variable, there is a single discriminant function. The centroid are the unidimensional space, one center for each group. For three groups in the dependent variable, there are two discriminant function. Hence, the centroids are in two dimensional space. By connecting the centroids, a canonical plot can be created depicting the discriminant function space. Next concept is eigenvalue. Eigenvalue is the ratio between the explained and unexplained variation in the model. It is also called as the characteristic root. For a good model, the eigenvalue must be more than 1. In discriminant analysis, there is one eigenvalue for each discriminant function. The bigger the eigenvalue, the stronger is discriminant power of the function. In an analysis with three groups, the ratio between two eigenvalues indicate the relative discrimination power of one of the discriminant function over the other. For example, if the ratio of two eigenvalues is 1.6, is 1 the first discriminant function accounts for 60 percent more of the between group variance for the three groups in the dependent variable compared to the second discriminant function. Relative percentage of discriminant function is a function's eigenvalue divided by the sum of all eigenvalues of all discriminant functions in the model. It represents the percentage of discriminating power for the model associated with the given discriminant function. 
usually the relative percentage of first function will be high if the values of the subsequent functions are small then single function is as good as two or more functions in the classification canonical correlation is the next concept it is a major of the association between the groups in the dependent variable and the discriminant function the high value implies a high level of association between the two and vice versa wilks lambda in the discriminant analysis wilks lambda is used to test the significance of the discriminant function calculating discriminant uh, function is not only the objective but we should understand how important it is or how significant it is wilks lambda will be used to understand that mathematically it is 1 minus the explained variation of the total variation and the value ranges from 0 to 1 unlike f statistics in linear regression when the value of lambda for a function is small the function is significant next is classification matrix the classification matrix is a simple cross tabulation of observed and predicted membership for a group predicted the value in the diagonal must be high and the values of diagonal must be close to zero box m like in the multivariate data analysis the box m test the assumption of the quality of variance covariant matrix in the group a big box m indicated by a small p value indicates violation of this assumption however when the sample size is big box m usually is large in such situation the natural logarithm of the variance covariance matrix of the group are compared sample size as a rule the sample size of the smallest group should exceed the number of independent variables though the general agreement is that there should be at least 5 cases for each independent variable and it is best model at least for 20 cases for each independent variable now let us understand how the method is as a dependency technique discriminant analysis joins a normally scaled criterion on a dependent variable with one or more independent variables the ratio on the ratio scale the discriminant equation is determined it can be to predict or predict the classification of the new observation that means you have the data some data you use to create the discriminant function and the small data which you have kept it aside may be used for testing whether the discrimination is correct or not this is done by calculating a linear function of the form di is equal to a plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 and so on up to bn xn please make a note here that a may not be present at some points in time because whether x1 and x2 if it is a function of two independent variable if x1 and x2 values are zero then there will not be any value to di so a may be absent in some of the cases where di is the score on the discriminant function for i and di is are the weights of coefficient and a is the constant the x values are the values of discriminating variables used in the analysis we remember that a single discriminant equation is required if the categorization calls for two groups if three groups are involved in the classification it will require two discriminant equation if more categories are called for in the dependent variable one needs one less than the number of categories of the discriminant function if there are n categories then there will be n minus 1 discriminating function not to forget that each of the discriminant groups are collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive and each entity belongs only one group while the most common use of discriminant analysis is to classify persons or object into various group it can also be used to analyze known groups to determine the relative influence of the specific factors for deciding into which group the various cases fall stages of discriminant analysis predictive discriminant analysis classification analysis of initial data set of known uh, categories classification analysis of new data set of known grouping classification analysis of new data of unknown grouping purpose derive the discriminant function using initial data set no classification involved determine how well discriminant function is classified classify the data using the classification rule derived from the predictive function may be part of validation analysis of initial predictive function classify the data using the classification rule derived from predictive function may be part of validation analysis of initial predictive function the requirements are assumption of the linear discriminant model will be there 
no validation is required, no validation is required for the processes. Now, let us see some illustrations. A cereal company wants to know if the amount of protein and vitamin D will influence the consumer evaluations about the pre-test we have conducted a company on 10 different varieties of cereal. Consumers are asked to classify whether they like a particular cereal or dislike it. Hypothetical data, personal evaluation, then vitamin D and the likes or dislikes of the 10 people are given in the table which is given to you. So, see the data where we have 5 people who are disliking the brand and there are 5 people who are liking the brand. The data related to the protein content and uh, it is given. You can see that there is a calculation which is given in the two sets the likes and the dislikes. So, x 1 is the amount of protein in grams per 1 serving and x 2 is the percentage of minimum daily requirement of vitamin D per 1 serving. So, the equation is D is equal to D 1 x 1 plus D 2 x 2. Let us understand what are the steps. Now, you have the data which is related to the variable x and variable y and the qualitative data is whether the brand is liked by the consumer or not. So, step 1 is find the mean of the corrected squares, find the values of x 1 square, x 2 square and summation of x and y. So, sum above the of the groups is calculated in the table given to you. Now, the you will find two equations which will have x 1, x 2 and the values of d 1 and d 2 are unknown which we have to find out. So, solving the equations uh, simultaneously, we will be able to find out the values of uh, d 1 and d 2. For that, you need to find out the mean of protein in the case of dislike group as well as in case of like group. So, one mean is 9, another mean is 4. So, the difference between them is equal to 5. Related to vitamin D, the mean of x 2 likers, dislikers is also 6.4 minus 4.4 that is equal to 2. The dislikers totals of the values are also given in the table, which is calculating the, the values from the mean. So, that calculations are shown in the table, which you can have a look at. Using this, we have the equation now, which is d 1 summation of x 2 square d 2 plus summation of x 1 x 2 d 2, which is equal to mean of x 2 of likers minus the mean of x 2 the dislikers. Appropriate numerical substitutions will bring us to the equation which is 20 d 1 plus 16 d 2 is equal to 5 and 16 d 1 plus 26.4 d 2 is equal to 2. These two equations are the equations which will help us to find out two unknowns which is d 1 and d 2. Solving these two equations simultaneously will give us the values d 1 is equal to 0.3. 6, 8 and d 2 is equal to minus 0 0.147. That means, our equation now becomes d which is the discriminant value is equal to 0 0.368 x 1 minus 0 0.147 x 2. That means, the value of x 2 is negative indicates that higher the value of x 2 the discrimination between the likes and dislikes will change. Let us see the illustration 2. A similar application is given below. A reputed bank headquarter in Mumbai, India had been selecting management trainees for their finance role over the last few years. The bank has had indifferent success with the selection of the process. Bank is looking forward to develop a procedure to improve its current selection process. The data is available for 30 management trainees along with their total work experience before joining the bank, CGPA score and the employment test score. It is noted that among the th these 30, 50 percent have been successful employees. Here, the independent variables are x 1, the total work experience, x 2, the CGPA score and x 3, the employment test score. Discriminant analysis determines how well the above independent variables will correctly classify those who are judged successfully by the bank from those who are judged unsuccessful. The classification results are given by the bank. Actual group number of cases predicted uh, for success and unsuccessful are given in the table. 
So, the successful and unsuccessful uh, employees management trainees are given to you. So, using the similar analysis, we can find out the standardized and unstandardized scores for D1 and D2. There will be based on the standardized and unstandardized discriminant functions, the equation is form which is equal to D is equal to 0 0.659 x1 plus 0 0.580 x2 plus 0 0.975 x3. Now, we can predict with a greater level of certainty whether the future management trainees are likely to be successful or not. Let us recapitulate, let us understand what we have seen. So, discriminant analysis is classification of technique, independent variable is qualitative in nature and independent variables are quantitative in nature. Classes are based on dependent variables, discriminant analysis with, with two groups will have one discriminant function multiple discriminant analysis will have more than two classes that are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. To classify the given sample in two or more categories, a discriminant function are obtained as regression analysis. Discriminant coefficients indicate the weight of the independent variable contributing to the classes. You may use it for your research where you may classify the set based on the qualitative variable. Thank you.